Hello everyone, my name is Mark Ewan and I'm here to introduce to you the Paleobiology Database. The Paleobiology Database is an online resource that was created 22 years ago and includes data on fossil occurrences from all over the globe. And it's a community resource that is added to daily by scientists from around the world. So I'm gonna show you two aspects of the database. One is a map interface that we call Navigator. So to get there, you go to the Paleobiology Database website and click on Explore. And up comes a map interface. And the dots represent places where fossils have been found around the planet. If you click on the time scale, we can resolve some of these dots a little bit better. And you can see there are millions of occurrences from all different time periods. And let me focus in on a particular time period to give you a better picture, since we can't quite see the forest for the trees here. Let's go to my favorite group, the whales. So I type the taxon into the search menu up here, choose it, and here are all the fossil whales on the planet. Now, uh, as many of you probably already know, whales are not from the entire Phanerozoic, but only the Cenozoic. So what we can do is we can double click on any time unit and blow it up to uh, fill up the entire screen. So I'm going to click, click on Cenozoic. And we can see here that now we can see all the time periods much better. Here are some basic statistics of what's on the screen. And let's say I'm only interested in whales from the Eocene. So I'm going to click on the Eocene. The map will redraw itself with only those dots from the Eocene. But you might say, this isn't what the world looked like in the Eocene, and that's true. We can go up to the menu bar here, click on the continents, and you'll see the world of the Eocene. And you can keep doing this with any time period you like, from the earliest time when whales were around to the latest. And it'll both redraw the dots, which are color coded to the time scale, which is why you can barely see them here. And it will also redraw the continents based on the G plates model. And this is um, a pretty powerful tool to visualize data. Sorry, I have to go back to the main menu here. Okay, so here are all the whales again. Another thing you can do over here is on this little graph icon, if you click it, it will show you the diversity of what is plotted on the map over time. This is sort of a quick and dirty way to visualize diversity. And you can save the images, you can download the data, uh, but it's a very small subset of the data. So this is, this is a very powerful graphical interface to, to visualize the data that's in the PBDB. But let's look at a more text-based interface. And to do so, I'm going to go back to the main menu by clicking on the icon here. Uh, and instead of going to um, any of these icons, I'm going to click on main menu. Uh, and this is the menu that you will see if you are not a logged in user. If you become an approved user, you get many more options to enter data. Basically, these are to browse and download data. So let's look again for a taxon. This, in this case, I'll use a genus, one near and dear to my heart. And this will pull up uh, basic information uh, about this genus, uh, Dorodon, which is a kind of basilosaurid archaeocete whale with some information about references, where it was named. It's a synonym of Prozuglodon. Here's where it was named. You can view a classification. Here's the type species, some ecological information. Uh, what I want to show you down here, there's a, a way to pull up some images uh, through a system called ePanda, and it's pulling these images from the iDig bio system. You can blow them up, you can download them, and you can get information on the images here. So there's the full scale image. Here's data about that image and where it came from directly from iDigBio. Um, another thing you can do here is, is click this button called show more details and it'll show uh, this similar information organized in a slightly uh, more sensible way. So you can view a classification all the way up to almost life here. You can look at a summary of the age range for the taxon and the collections in the paleobiology database that include this taxon. And this, this little known feature, you can do what's called the external literature research. So this um, 
is some pre-digested data of papers that may or may not be in the database, in the Paleobelgian database that mention this taxon. It's a handy little feature um, and it's not well known. But it's a good way to sort of explore uh, everything that Paleobiology Database knows about a given taxon. So now let's look at collections. So collections are basically places on the earth restricted by time and rock unit that include a given, uh, that include fossils. And so let's do the same taxon. Here you go. So there are in the database, 63 collections that include the taxon Dorodon. So let's look at the first one, some uh, Alborneta from Egypt. Um, you can see it was from this reference. You can see where it is, formation it's from, and age, the lithology, and the environment of deposition, and all the fossils that were listed uh, from this given place. And it's is pretty powerful, but it's only one of many. Right, so there are 63. What if I want all the data on all of those collections? Well, I can go over here to download records of all types and I can say I want collections. Um, you can get all this other kind of data too, the occurrences, strata, you can get a diversity output, which I'll show you in just a moment, uh, lists of taxa, opinions about those taxa, and even just the papers in the database that have anything to do with that taxon. So let's do the same thing here. Taxon is Dorodon. You can put some qualifiers on this. So I just want things in the genus. Uh, I want uh, regular taxa only, so that'll exclude any trace fossils. And I want to exclude anything uncertain. So any AF, CF, quotes, question marks. I just want the real stuff. Um, I could also limit it by time, place, you know, continent, rock unit, um, and I'm going to get the complete data set. So by clicking this box, I said, Paleobiology database, give me everything you have about these collections. Hit download, and up pops an Excel file. Well, this is a CSV file that I'm opening in Excel, I should say. Uh, with tabular data. So here, this first block is the metadata about the collections, and then here is all the different things the Paleobiology database knows about all these different collections. So there's lots and lots of data here that then you can use in your research. And it's very, very handy. So let me show you one more download here. I'm going to show you how to do diversity download. And for that, I want more data. So I'm going to do all of Cetacea. So diversity data gives you a, a very specific kind of output um, that looks quite different, but it has the same basic overall structure. Metadata, data, and it shows you the diversity in each of these time periods. And you can specify what level you want, stage, substage, age, that sort of thing and all these different diversity parameters uh, that you can use to study the diversity of your organisms over time. So these are just a couple of the things you can do with the Paleobiology database. Uh, there's a lot more uh, and you can use it uh, without getting an account, just like I showed you today. Or if you're really interested and want to enter your own data so you can use it and share it with others, uh, click on the Join the PVDB button and we can sign you up to join the system. Thanks for watching.